I'm going to show you reading documentation, and then we're going to talk about value types. I'm going to show you functions, and that should take us up through lunch. I've checked with Deli Delicious and gave them credit card information. And last night, I was out walking with my wife and kids. And I saw an Uber truck go by, and I ran after it. And I said, what are you doing tomorrow noon? And they're like, uh, I don't know, nothing. I mean, well, can you pick up sandwiches for me and bring them to Bitwise? So they're going to pick up the sandwiches, Uber, right? Like, I don't need a ride, but the sandwiches need a ride. Because <laughs> I didn't know how else to get the sandwiches down here. So we'll see if the food actually shows up. We might have bought somebody else some sandwiches. How do you know it's an Uber truck? Because they had the little sticker on the back, the Uber sticker. They have a Uber car sticker. It looks like this. When you see this sticker, these are the old ones, right? And the new ones, the new ones look like, uh, what? They're all like the old ones. Here's what a new one looks like. I don't know why there's... Maybe I didn't hire an Uber driver. Yeah, before and after. That's what the after looks like now. So here's my... Uh, here's my... Uh, let's go to this, this version of the program right here. And, um, and I have that. I could also do this. I could do the ans answer is space and run that and unexpected x, syntax error, unexpected x, expecting comma or this because I have my comma in the wrong spot, right? So I need to put my comma right there and there we go. The answer is 42. My heart always stops a little bit when I'm showing basic things and I don't get it right. I'm like, oh no, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Which is also true. We're all figuring it out together. But hopefully I figured this stuff out. The answer is 42. So I could add things in like that. I could take that and I could say x, comma, and then put in the literal value, the just the plus sign, plus that, plus y. And I'm going to want some spaces probably. Let's see. Nope, it added the spaces in for me, so I didn't need spaces on each side of those. 36 plus 6 equals 42. So that's kind of cool. So what is it? How do I know that I could add this stuff in, right, and maybe format it? And it formats it for me. And there is the idiomatic. The idiomatic Go code is formatted like that, right? So it brought those two together with no space. And that's just running the format thing. So how do, I, how do I know I could do that? Well, I need to be able to read about how to use these different tools. So a uh, programming language comes with pre-built functions and code that's already been written, which you just grab and use. And so if we go to golang.org, the official website of the Go programming language, and go to Documents, we can scroll down Installing Go, Learning Go, References. So here are References, Package Documentation. The documentation for the Go standard library. Cool. So I could go to package documentation. And now I can learn about all these different packages. Well, we are looking up here and we had package main, right? So this was a package. And that's a special package, the main, right? So main is always the package that is like the main starting point for your program. This is where your program starts. So it looks for package main and then it goes to func main. And then it starts right here, right? That's where your program starts. But there's other packages, and we'll talk about that. So let me, let me talk about control flow and package, package main, control flow, package main, func, and func main. So that will be something that we talk about after we get all of our install, go, uh, setting up your Go work space environment. I'm going to call it Go workspace and environment because that has special meaning. And then at some point we'll talk about that. But it'll be when we set up our environment. I'm surprised that it added the spaces. Um, 
What if you didn't want those spaces? Too bad. What if you didn't want the spaces? Too bad. And that's where some developers get a little bit like, huh? I can't do it the way I want. No, you can't. Coding happens in a team, and from above, the lords of coding, the luminaries of computer science, Rob By, Ken Thompson, and Robert Gressmer have said, they have declared, you shall code in this way, youngling. And this is the way it happens, and if you don't like, you could go to some sucky language like JavaScript. <laughs> they have declared that this is the way Go Code should look so that we all do it the same and there won't be endless arguments among devs on teams saying the curly braces should come on the next line no they should come after I want it this way I want it that way it's a, this is the way it is now quit and just get to work focus on what's important I'm tired of hearing you guys bitch <laughs> yeah or that so yeah, it's just a certain way. So what was I talking about? I was talking about the standard library and documentation. So uh, right, we have package main, and, and, and that's one package. And then there's other packages. So one idea in programming is to modularize your code. And that's like you know one of the 10 commandments of programming. Thou shall not duplicate code. And so we modularize code to make it more readable and to be able to just have chunks of code that do certain things and then we call those chunks of code. We say, hey, I need the chunk of code that takes text and makes it all capital. I only want to write that thing once. It'll be a function. I pass text into it. It takes all the letters in that text, turns them into capital characters, and returns that string back to me. And so that's just one function that I write. It's modularized. Anytime I have text that I need to capitalize all the letters, I just call that one function and it capitalizes all the letters. I don't want to write that in 50 different places because if I ever have to change it, then I'd have to change it in 50 different places. I write it once, and that's called do not repeat yourself. Also, DRY, the acronym is DRY, do not repeat yourself, D-R-Y, do not, don't, repeat, R-Y, yourself. And so that's modularizing code. So we modularize code into functions, and then we take functions that are all related to each other, and we stick them into packages. So we have a strings package. So that function that capitalizes everything, I'd stick it into the strings package if I was making this. What's up? You got a question or a comment? Uh, yeah, comment. Um, the format print line, if you take out the ln in front of the variables, it prints. It removes the spaces. So the person who's asking about spaces. Cool. So would that be essentially like um, it? How you can put in your um, in your text thing, you can add things to your dictionary. Is it kind of like that, where so you don't have to continuously do the same thing over again? Oh, you're talking to somebody who's like 45. I grew up in the 80s, so texting still kind of like, you know, I just do the basics. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. It sounds like it's called a function that you know when you do something, it just runs that piece of code. So uh, I'm just kind of telling you that because we're talking about packages, and packages are a way that we group like stuff together, modularize our code. So that's the, the concept you should be getting. And one of the packages that we're using right here is the FMT package, FMT. So uh, mm, when you see like this dot something else, right? You should think package function, okay? Sometimes it'll be package type or package variable or something like that. Right, but this is like package, the front part. So from the FUMPT package, so I could go here and search for FUMPT. Oh, hey, cool, there's a FUMPT package in the standard library. And I could click FUMPT. And, uh, and then here, I could start reading about what's the FUMPT package do. And you say FUMPT, even though it sounds weird. That's the way you say it in Go. You say the FUMPT package. It's not the format package, it's the FUMPT package. And you go to like here, and I can go to the index, and then I can read about the different stuff that's available here. There's different types and different functions, and one of the functions is print line. So I could come here and I could read about print line. Print line formats using default formats for its operands and writes to standard output. Operands is one that makes me go, huh? Operators, operands, operators are like the plus, the minus, that kind of stuff. That's the operator. The operand is like, you know, two plus seven. 
two and seven are operands plus his operator. Is that correct? I, I have like 97% certainty on that, but there's 3% doubt there. But, you know, so the operands, right, using for its operands and write standard output. Standard output is just your terminal, you know, so, you know, like if we were running this natively, it'd just be like the terminal. Spaces are always added between operands, things that we've put in, and a new line is appended. It returns the number of bytes written and any write error encountered. So bytes, let's see, a byte is eight bits. So it returns the number of bytes written. There's the return. And any error encountered. Cool. And then somebody said, hey, print doesn't add the spaces. Well, let's read. Print, without print line, formats using default formats for its operands and writes to standard out, same as print line. Spaces are added between operands when neither is a string. When neither is a string. So if we just had numbers, spaces would be added. Right? And it returns the number of bytes written in any bright error counter, but it doesn't add a new line, right? It doesn't add a new line. So that's the difference between print and print line. So I could have just said print here. And print line. Right? So just subtle differences, and you don't have to memorize them. You're coding, you're like, what are you going for? And you try it. Oh, that worked. Oh, let me remember that there's a difference. Let me try the other way. Okay, that's the way I like it. You know, whatever it is. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, though, just to see that. Print does that. Print line does that. Cool. And you can make it add a line by it. Yeah, so Bob's saying, hey, if this is the end of my program, run, right? It added a new line at the end of this, but if I don't have print line, no new line was added, so that's all in one line. But then Bob is saying, you could do this. And that's an escaped character, and the escaped character is for a new line. That's, give me a new line. That's the notation for a new line, the escaped character. There, and, is sorry, is there a difference between single double quotes? Or they just you can't use single quotes. Cannot. You have to use double quotes okay. for, a, for a string. You can also use back ticks. You know, so if I wanted to say... If I wanted to say that, I could use backtick. Yeah, I can enlarge that. Sorry, you guys have a smaller screen. And backticks, you know, are uh, also for strings. And they do a raw string literal. So raw string literal is just as the way it appears inside inside these raw string literals with back ticks. The back tick is just beneath your escape key on the keyboard. So I could even, I think, do this. Raw string literal, just as it appears between these, right? So if I want to include double quotes or anything like that in there, back ticks. Otherwise, just double quotes. I'll leave that in. So uh, we're talking about documentation. I'm just going to copy this and put that in there. That's huge. I need normal text. There we go. And uh, strings. And strings could be double quotes and back ticks. That gives you a raw string literal. And there's an example of raw string literal. And... Uh, we talked about modularizing code. We put code uh, dry, do not repeat yourself. And we put code into groupings. Groups. Into functions put functions 
into groups, right? So that's the way we modularize. Oh, thanks. You're going to fix that for me? Aha! Sure. I love it. I want you guys in my life all the time. Anytime I'm working on documents, just make them better. So, uh, so that's strings. And, uh, and now we're talking about the standard library. And so the standard library... And uh, we're look, we looked at like, you know, the, we talked about the strings package a little bit. And then we were looking at the fumped package. And uh, now we're going to talk about golang.org versus godoc.org. Two places to see documentation. Golang.org and godoc.org. Golang.org is standard library. Fix that, somebody. <laughs> and this is standard library and third party packages. Better formatting. So uh, there's two places you could see documentation. So one was at golang.org, right? We just went into documentation, then went down to standard documentation, and we looked at package font. Now, the nice thing about package font is I could change package to source. Source, went, 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 went. And it shows me the source files that make up that package. So your package can be spread amongst different files. And so I could go look at the code which makes up the standard library. And I could actually see the code that was written by the designers of the language. And this will give me like awesome insight into you know, how to write Go code, because I could see how are the people who create the language, how are they creating Go code, you know? And so I could just look through here and see, like, all the different places, you know, Funt is used and how, how, they wrote, how they wrote it. And so I'm just scrolling through it to kind of check it out. Interesting. So that's, uh, you can see the source files, but then there's also one other place to see documentation, that's godoc.org. And at godoc.org, this has both the standard library and third-party packages. So if you want to do something with Shopify, there's somebody wrote a package for Shopify. The code's already written, and you could go in and get it. If you wanted to do something with, I don't know, somebody tell me something, PayPal. You can see, okay, has anybody done anything with PayPal? Here's some, somebody did some stuff with PayPal. And I can look at that code and either use it or build upon it. And, you know, whatever, third-party packages, including Fumped, the standard library. So the standard library and third-party packages are here. So there's Fumped from the standard library. Look at the URL. So at the URL, I could just put in the package name. If I wanted to see the strings package, I do that. Now I'm looking at the pa strings package from the standard library. But that's the difference. So I always go to Godoc. And I like the formatting of it better. And so over here you have index, which takes you down to the index. Exact same stuff as in golang.org. It's a standard library documentation. And you also have the files. So package files, doc, format, print, scan. So some of the same ones. When we were looking at golang dot org forward slash <coughs> source format we had a couple of test files right scan print format and doc we have scan print format doc so the test files don't show up here so if you want to see the test files you go to golang.org so that's just to show you about how documentation works and that's the standard library, and so you need to be able to look things up. And it doesn't like the way backticks is spelled. I guess it likes it like that. And uh, in the next one, we're going to look at variable types and then functions, and then you guys will code again.